sourcing red kangaroo meat for his dish, Ben travels across the border to South Australia's northeastern pastoral region. The people come into this dinner uh, very well travelled, very experienced eaters, diners, critics and chefs and I think to really tell an Australian story you need to use something that's unique to this land, you know. We're going to meet a man uh, by the name of Ray trying to source some of the finest quality kangaroo that Australia has to offer. Ray, how are you? How are Ben? Good to see you, mate. Nice to see you. Come through. Yes. What is the hunter looking for when, he, um, when he's out there um, on the land? Well, first of all, he's looking for an animal that's in good health, that's moving freely and is looking um, that there's no problem with the animal and they can tell they're experts. Secondly, he's looking for the right size animal and a red kangaroo and a male kangaroo because we don't hunt the, the female kangaroos. Yes. So we stick to the male. The male is not like any other animal. A lot of people think that the females will be more tender. It's not the case with kangaroos. Kangaroos are just naturally tender because of the coarse cells, because of the way it's, it's hunted in its own environment. It's under no stress or no strain, which is completely different to any other animal. And that's why the shelf life of it's so good as well. One of the things I really like about it getting into that, you know, coming from its own environment, is that it's not, um, it's not being given anything that's unnatural. And when I eat this, it just tastes very pure and clean to me. I think it's one of the most sustainable, if not the most sustainable meat that you can eat in Australia. Yeah. Heading further into the outback, Ben visits one of Australia's premium kangaroo sourcing regions. Hey, Peter. Ben, how nice you going, Ben? Peter. Peter will take you out and show you what he does, and uh, he'll take you for a little bit of a drive, and you'll see how many kangaroos you can come across. Great. Sounds we'll nice. go for a wander. Jump in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. No worries. So, how long have you been doing this game for, Peter? Started in 1979. I come up here for six week trips and then go home for a fortnight. So you stay up here for six weeks? Yeah, what, about what's, that, six, seven Is weeks. there a certain time of the year for you that's better than others? Or, Not um, really, it just no. depends with the rain. Yep. It's all dry and then you get a thunderstorm. So you'll have green feed six inches high in you know, 10 square kilometres. So there'll be 100,000 roos on it. Wow. You know, it just mobs them up because they all want to eat the green. The National Parks do an aerial count every year yep. and they just do lines through it. 20 kilometre line through the whole pastoral area of South Australia and they count the roos and this year they got, well this place we're going up here, they got about 45 to the square kilometre. There's 170,000 roos here. Wow. Do you reckon we're getting close to the time where we might find some or is it a bit early yet? A bit early, they're still laying around. They'll probably only feed for an hour a night, an hour, two hours a night. They're still laying around. <laughs> I know. think we could do that, Peter, eh? Yeah, that's it, it'd be a good life. <laughs> There's a couple of blue does. They've both got little bucks with them. We don't shoot a ruse before dark. It's gotta be after dark and we don't shoot does. All we yeah. shoot is males. There's that many ruse around that it's just not a problem. Oh, there's heaps of them out there. Yeah, heaps of roos out there. No shortage of roos. Another roo there, another roo there. See what you Never got, ends. You've got the eyes for them, Peter, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've only been looking at them my whole life. <laughs> for me, Peter, it's fascinating to hear you talk about the massive effort and the um, commitment to quality that you make, especially the, the traceability and um, the integrity with that, you know. Um, all of the information is there for anybody who might want it, yep. you know, right from the time that you shot it, yep. the temperature that it was, you know, when it went into the cool room and the temperature it was three yep. hours later and the temperature it was six hours yep. later and and yep. um, all of this data that that um, Paru has, um, yep. it's pretty... It's um, got total traceability the whole time, you know. Yeah. That's what I like about the product. That's why I reckon it's one of the best products in the world. It's been a heck of a day. Yeah, pretty yeah, good I really appreciate you guys bringing me out here and showing me where this uh, fine product comes from. Eh? Well, so, that's cool. okay, we just won't take you back. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, eh? I'm stuck out here now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the Outback's all about. Exactly here. Yeah, no, it's been a real privilege, thank you. <laughs>